Bonjour peeps. Bienvenue à uh, Français. Uh, we are somewhere in uh, southern France. But where are we, Richard? Uh, Banyuls. Banyuls sur mer. Banyuls. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're trying something different for our, our estudio in uh, California because the subject for the next two days is uh, about prejudice and uh, tolerance, the lack of tolerance in society and how to improve it. And rather than talk about that, because it's not interesting and it's uh, a complex subject, we're actually going to talk about the bearded vulture, of which Richard Prime is not just an expert in climbing mountains in France and inspiring young people, he's an expert in the bearded vulture. And we all have a perception of vultures which isn't positive, and Richard is going to explain why it's not positive but what the reality is. And the focus of this uh, next two minutes is actually about how to change our perceptions. Richard, tell me a bit about what we think, what you think the world thinks about vultures. Well, you don't see many vultures in the sea, that's for sure. The vultures don't like the seaside at all. So it's a, it's a little bit of a, uh, an interesting uh, location for talking about vultures because vultures will, uh, and they do migrate actually from Spain to Africa and they avoid the sea like the plague. Now we all think of vultures as being those ugly birds in uh, Jungle Book and, and, and the whole idea of what we saw with David Attenborough in the UK on BBC and around the world of swarms of horrible big birds uh, sticking their heads inside carcasses and, uh, and their faces covered in blood and it's quite an ugly impression that we have I think of vultures generally around the world wherever we live. Yeah and we don't tolerate them because of our perceptions. We don't tolerate them, we think they're ugly, we don't they smelly, they, they pass on disease and such. Yeah. So, so, they, so they what's the reality a... of the bearded vulture then? Well, I like to use the bearded vulture as a, as a good demonstration of the value of, of vultures from the point of view that it's a, it's a very large bird, it's a nearly three metre wingspan. It's, uh, it is a beautiful, magnificent bird in many, many respects. It looks fierce, but it's actually a very gentle bird. It's easily disturbed by human activity. It's easily disturbed by eagles and, and other birds around it. It lives a solitary life. It's a very unusual bird in many respects. Uh, it's solely more than 80, 90% of its diet is bones. But can you tell me about uh, what you're having us believe is that these bolt vultures fly up to a height, an incredible height, and then drop these bones to smash them to and then eat them yes. to make them smaller and digestible. Yes. How does it do that? Well, I mean, it's called a bearded vulture because it has a beard on the side of its face below its eyes. We believe that the beard actually helps it to determine the wind direction and strength. So it's like so a wind barometer? It's like a wind barometer and it's, it's for enabling the bird to drop bones very precisely from a great height. It That's breaks incredible. those burn bones, bones, bones into small pieces and it will eat the bone entirely and it eats the, the marrow inside the bone as well. So it's a completely recyclable machine? Indeed it is, yes. It Indeed. cleans up after death of, a natural death of something else? Yes, they are the world's great cleaners, on, both on the savannah and in the, in the mountains of the world, the Himalayas, uh, here in the Pyrenees, in the I, Alps. It was I, exterminated because it was thought, because of its size and appearance, that it took small children we away. We were scared and they were scared of them, so they exterminated them during the end of the, the 19th century. And tell us about, um, apparently it paints itself red. Well, it paints itself orange, Graham. It's the, the orange iron oxide that we find uh, naturally in the ground, and uh, it uses the paint uh, to indicate that it's uh, part of a, uh, a, a pair in the territory. It's a bit like a war paint. Um, so it's a fascinating bird. It really is truly fascinating. Okay. So yeah. just that, just that few minutes from uh, an expert in vultures. It's not so much about bearded vultures we're, we're interested in as much as we we are. It tells us that there's an awful lot of things we didn't understand that previously we were scared of and fearful of because we just didn't understand. But now we understand. We should be more curious, more interested, and more wanting to learn more. Indeed. Yeah, so absolutely. Richard's going to take me. I hope. We're going to go in the Land Rover up to a mountain with a hamper of food and some fine wine. Yes. And we're just going to watch these birds gracefully cruise around in their atmosphere. Absolutely. 
Graham, yes. How cool is that? It would be very cool. And yes. if you want to well, learn more about bearded vultures in the, this particular part of France, of which there's a, there's a few thousand, I think. There, there aren't many in the world. There's 5,000 in the whole world. There are about 120 pairs, breeding pairs in the Pyrenees. Okay. So Get in touch with Rich. Yeah. Thank you. See you guys. Au revoir. A tout à Love is patient. Love is kind. From the Mediterranean Sea. A tout à